We're back with the bigger picture. Okay, the thriller in three, two. As the world continues to mourn the death of Michael Jackson, his ex-wife, Lisa Marie Presley, summed it up best by saying, Michael Jackson didn't know how to be mediocre. His life was either really good or really bad. And tonight, 16 by 9's Francis Salvaggio explains some of the bad that made Michael Jackson so controversial. Having been a recluse for so long, this is what the world had been waiting for. A recent glimpse of the self-proclaimed king of pop, the last video ever shot of Michael Jackson. The singer appears thin in rehearsals for his London comeback tour. Energetic, maybe not as frantic as his thriller days, but just as iconic. It was a tour he had hoped would get the world's attention one last time. If he only knew. We have a, a, a gentleman here that needs help and he's not breathing yet. He's not breathing and we need to, we're trying to pump him, but he's not. He's okay. Not okay, how old is he? He's uh, 50 years old, sir. 50, okay. He's unconscious, he's not breathing? Yes, he's not breathing, sir. Okay, and he's not conscious either. He's not no, breathing. he's not conscious, sir. Michael Jackson was rushed to the UCLA Medical Center shortly after 1 o'clock on June 25th. At 2.26, according to his brother Jermaine, the king of pop was gone. A team of doctors, including emergency physicians and cardiologists, attempted to resuscitate him for a period of more than one hour, and they were unsuccessful. What's especially sad about this story is that it's not entirely unique. You see, while most people are up the street looking at Michael Jackson's star, Hollywood Boulevard is full of very similar stars with very similar tragic stories. Let me do what you know I love to do. To Heath Ledger, to the cover of the new Eminem record is called Relapse, and it's got Eminem's face all done up with pills. Michael Jackson was just about to do 50 nights in London. You know, that takes a real toll on your body. These dates get booked so far in advance that you can't pull out or cancel, so you have to go on with the show which is why painkillers become such a crippling side effect to pop culture fame. This is the curse of celebrity under the spotlight. Like many before him though, the pain is not his alone. But as memorials grow to honor the pop icon for a list of achievements and successes too numerous to mention, some people have started to wonder about Jackson's darker side. What happens with our pop world is once you die, they become beatified. You know, come 1990 on, he was really known as Wacko Jacko. Now you read all the obituaries and they refer to him as the king of pop, but he's only just posthumously uh, achieved that new moniker back. There's a theory that says uh, once you get famous, whatever age you're at, when you get famous, you stop developing from there. So if you're Britney Spears or something and you make it at 17, then you're going to be forever cemented as a 17-year-old. Michael Jackson got famous when he was five. His relationship with children, he always saw himself as a child. So whether he crossed that line, it seems pretty apparent that he did. So I think his, his, his image and his standing will, will forever be tarnished. Jackson's bizarre behavior ranged from just plain weird to worrisome. And then the bombshell, allegations of child sexual abuse behind the walls of his Neverland ranch. While never convicted of molestation, he did admit to sleeping with children in his own bed. The lingering doubt cast a large shadow over Jackson's life and now death. I think everyone should just stop talking about it. They should remember the good things. And yeah. The talk continues, though, around the world and across the Internet. Anyone dying is sad, I suppose, but I, for one, won't really miss him. Didn't like his music. But most sickening is that most prefer to ignore that this guy was a child molester. Since there's already a thread full of hatred for Michael Jackson, I thought maybe I'd start a thread for those of us who are actually rather upset that he died. Oh yeah, and I'm going to come right out and say it, even though it would seem I'm in a very small minority here, I don't think he was a child molester. The stain of the allegations, though, has stuck to him as closely as the media. Brian Oxman is a close family friend. He says the pressure became too much. 
The result was I warned everyone, and lo and behold, here we are. I don't know what caused his death, but I feared this day, and here we are. Good and bad, Michael Jackson's legacy is permanently etched. Nothing he's done can ever be erased, though in grief, parts appear easily ignored. I believe that he hung out with children sometimes because they were innocent, they were pure. He didn't have a childhood himself, so hanging around with these children, they could, he could relate to them in a certain way, and they were loving and pure and true, not like the outside world was to him. God Almighty will have his judgment day with Michael, but as far as myself and who I am, I am compassionate towards him. It is hoped that Jackson's death may provide some clarity about his life, but mystery remains his companion. Los Angeles's chief coroner, Craig Harvey, says autopsies have revealed very little so far. The cause of death has been deferred. The medical examiner has ordered additional testing, such as toxicology and other studies. Those tests, we anticipate, will take approximately four to six additional weeks. Jackson's family is also dealing with the future of the singer's three children, and debt estimated to be nearly a half a billion dollars. The pop icon had hoped his final tour would net nearly $50 million towards his debt. This video is now the only reminder of what might have been. Today, the world can only remember what was. Canada Day turned into Michael Jackson Day for some. I think the fact that we're having a Michael Jackson tribute on Canada Day shows how much he meant to the world and in Canada. Michael Jackson has had a huge impact on a lot of Canadians, a lot of Canadian DJs. All around the world, fans, friends and family will forever remember the King of Pop, regardless of the reason. To you, Michael is an icon. To us, Michael is family. And he will forever live in all of our hearts. Sixteen by nine is hitting the road. Help me find the most generous and courteous people in Canada using Facebook and Twitter. Tell me where to go. Give me some suggestions. Where should I sleep? Where should I eat? Would anybody be willing to give me a meal if I lost my wallet? Would somebody help me out if my car blew a tire and I was stuck on the side of the road? I need to know what you think. And that's it for us tonight. If you have a story idea, just give us a call at 1-877-TELL-69 or email us at global16by9.com. And don't forget to blog with us right after the broadcast about any of the stories you watch tonight. And you can also send us a video message through YouTube or Facebook. I'm Mary Garofalo. Thanks for joining us. And from all of us here, good night. Our final word tonight goes to our 16 by 9 viewers. I was wanting to thank the producers for the Stonewall Riot story. It was wonderful to see. There are so many of our young GLBTTQ community members who aren't aware of the significance of it. 16 by 9, the bigger picture. That's a wrap.